Today we are going to talk about Bitcoin's value. Keep yourself grounded with our fair valuation framework for Bitcoin. Welcome back to the Bitcoin layer. Today we're going to break down our fair valuation framework. This is a combination of three different valuation metrics that we use to tell us what is Bitcoin worth. Now, most investors have heard of a price to earnings ratio. This is a valuation metric that we use in the equity market to tell us how much a company is worth. So the price to earnings ratio has two components to it. It has price and it has earnings. The price is the number that you see on the screen. That's what people are buying and selling the company's shares for today. The earnings is a number that the company publishes once a quarter, earnings per share. This is a way for us to understand how much money the company is making per share. Now, the great thing about a price to earnings ratio is that it gives investors a sense of reality how much they are paying for how much the company is actually making. Let's pretend that the average price to earnings ratio is 12 for stocks. So that means that the price that you pay, let's say $120, is 12 times the earnings amount of that company, for example, $10. So a company earning $10 per share that's priced at $120 per share in the market trades at a P.E. ratio of 12. Now, if the company appreciated to $150 per share, but the earnings hadn't changed, that would be a P.E. of 15. Likewise, if the price of the share went down to 80, with the earnings unchanged, that would be a P.E. of 8. And if we look and pretend historically that the price to earnings average is 12, we would know that a P.E. ratio of 8 is cheap, and a P.E. ratio of 15 is expensive. Now, that doesn't mean that every time a P.E. is 8, we should buy, and every time a P.E. is 15, we should sell, but it does give us a sense. It does give us a reality check. How much are we paying for the earnings power of this company? So for Bitcoin, we have a price, but we don't have earnings. So how do we value Bitcoin with the same sort of ratio that we use for equities. At the Bitcoin layer, we have come up with our fair valuation framework. This is a way for us to look at different ways of valuing Bitcoin and then use a ratio in a similar way that we use price to earnings ratio on stocks. We use a ratio to give us an average sense of where Bitcoin is trading at relative to what we believe are its valuation metrics. Now, let's break down the three components of our fair valuation framework. Number one, we use the 200-week moving average. This is a long-term average price of Bitcoin. Think the average price every day over the last four years, that would give us approximately a 200-week moving average. At the Bitcoin layer, we think that the 200-week moving average is a very important metric. Even though it's just a long-term average price, the most interesting part about Bitcoin's 200-week moving average is that it's a metric that has never declined. This means that every week that we look at the average price of Bitcoin, looking back over four years, it is increasing. That is a sign of the slow and steady adoption of Bitcoin despite its extremely volatile price. Number two, realized price. This is another way of saying the cost basis of Bitcoin. We take the average price of all the transactions that move on chain. These are mostly transactions when investors send Bitcoin to exchanges to sell it, or they withdraw Bitcoin from exchanges after they have purchased them. We look at the realized price on Bitcoin because it has historically served as a very important floor for Bitcoin's price. Generally, what we see is that when Bitcoin's price comes back down to its realized price, we see investors reluctant to sell as that is their cost basis. Number three, electricity hash value. This is a proprietary metric that we're using at the Bitcoin layer. Now, we're not the only ones to try to come to a metric that tells us how much money in dollars it takes to create one Bitcoin, but we're using our own little formula here where we're combining minor efficiency, 
how much it costs to purchase mining equipment, electricity cost, and the difficulty of Bitcoin, meaning the algorithm's difficulty to mine Bitcoin. Combining all of these factors, we're coming up with our electricity hash value. This is what we believe to be the cost to mine one Bitcoin. And just like if we think about the cost to drill one barrel of oil or the cost to mine one ounce of gold, the mining costs of Bitcoin is a relevant factor in trying to value the price of Bitcoin. Now, let's take a look at all three components of our fair valuation framework relative to Bitcoin's price over the last several years. The blue line is the 200 week moving average, the first metric that we discussed. The red line is the realized price of Bitcoin. And the orange line is our electricity hash value. Look at what has happened to these three valuation metrics over time. There's a steady increase in each of them. There are huge divergences between price and these valuation metrics. And then most importantly, we can see that price comes down toward these valuation metrics every so often, every few years. And these metrics clearly show that Bitcoin's price responds to some of these valuation metrics. Instead of looking at all these lines at the same time without any context, let's now turn to the Bitcoin layer's confluence price, which is simply an average of these three metrics that we've explained so far. Here's the same timeline, but instead of showing you each individual component of our valuation framework, we are showing you the confluence price. This is the average of the three metrics that we've discussed. So on the bottom panel, we also have our fair valuation ratio. This is simply the price divided by our TBL confluence price. I want to break down four very important components to this chart. The first thing I want to point your attention to is that the average ratio, the average fair valuation ratio that we see, meaning what is the average ratio of Bitcoin's price to our TBL confluence price over the last several years? It's about 2.3, okay? So that should be the average fair valuation ratio that you keep in your head. If today the confluence price was right around $20,000, which it is right now, a 2.3 ratio would mean a $46,000 price of Bitcoin. So if we were to take the average ratio over the last several years and apply it to today's TBL confluence price, Bitcoin would be just shy of about $50,000 today. Okay, the second thing is how much time Bitcoin's price has actually spent below one, meaning the confluence price over time, how long does Bitcoin's price, market price, actually spend below its confluence price? And the answer is very little time. In 2019, Bitcoin spent 13 days below its confluence price as we saw a huge last flush in the first quarter of the year. In 2020, when the pandemic started, we saw Bitcoin crash by 50% in only a matter of hours, and it actually spent two days below its confluence price. This year, Bitcoin has spent 40 days below this ratio of one, and that means Bitcoin has spent a significant amount of time trading below the average valuation that we believe Bitcoin to be worth. The third thing I want to point your attention to is how high this fair valuation ratio can get. So last year, we saw this ratio get to four. Again, in today's context, that would be an $80,000 price of Bitcoin, given where our confluence price is today. So Bitcoin can get extremely stretched relative to its fair value. Now, this is an important point here because we can't just use the fair value ratio to tell us what Bitcoin is going to trade at all the time. Instead, we have to use it as context to where Bitcoin is trading at today. The last thing I wanna point your attention to is we talked about how few days Bitcoin actually spends below its confluence price, but I want you to look at what happens when Bitcoin does actually come back to a fair valuation ratio of one. Each time it comes back to one, Bitcoin starts another bull market. And that's what's really important here to look at is why the confluence price is so important. Because when Bitcoin does come back down 
to its fair valuation metrics, the momentum behind Bitcoin buying really starts to gain again. As when it reaches very high levels of this ratio, what we're seeing is exhaustion from the market. We're seeing a lot of leverage coming into the market to make it reach those ratios. When the ratios come back down, that's a sign that that leverage and that fluff in the market is finally gone. What are the main takeaways here? We have to think about Bitcoin on a long time horizon. We can't just get obsessed with the 75% declines and the 500% advances by themselves. We have to look at where those advances and declines are in the grand scheme of things. And when we think about Bitcoin value, we should think about these three components, long-term price, realized price, electricity hash value. And at the Bitcoin layer, we are trying to simplify all of this for you, giving you one TBL confluence price and one TBL fair valuation ratio so that at all times you know what Bitcoin is trading at versus what we think it's worth over a long term time horizon. Thanks for sticking with us for today's episode of the Bitcoin layer. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video. I want to thank my sponsors Zebedee and Voltage. Zebedee is a lightning network Bitcoin company focused on getting lightning network powered video games into the market. Voltage is a company focused on building Bitcoin and Lightning Network infrastructure. So if you're interested in getting your own node, contact Voltage and see what they can do for you.